at the end of the day, championships are only one part of a career. Period. They do not affect the legacy, bro. However, they do enhance them. Behind the mask. Dude, what up? What's happening, my boy? Tell me, man, another day of paradise. You know what it is, baby. Yeah, man, like, it is paradise. Facts, I'm about facts. to be up out of this piece. I, I need to take a little time away. Yeah. You know, but we always got to address it on the show. Oh, most definitely, most definitely, When we def, get man. back. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I, I love the ensemble, bro. You look like you winning over there. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I am winning, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, like... People be like, when you when you when you play good, you gotta look good. And I, <laughs> listen, I know I look good today. Facts, facts. I'm with you, bro. You know what, man? It, it is a great time of the year. Uh, we in the midst of the NBA championship, you know, and and we just had season four alone. We had Hall of Famers on. Yep. Right. Yep. I'm talking about Dominique Wilkins, Charles Barkley, NBA Hall of Famers. Then on the football side, Edger and James. Previously, Calvin Johnson, Champ Bailey. Again, all these guys are winners. All these guys have something in common because they all made the Hall of Fame. But I think another thing that they had in common was none of them actually won a championship. Mm. So that brings me, you're talking about winning. Yeah. Question. Does winning a championship define an athlete's career? Hell no. Absolutely not. Two ton at the end of the day is this, bro. Championships are only one part of somebody's career. Mm. It's only one part. Now, championships, they don't even affect the legacy. Mm. However, they do enhance them. Mm. So no. So what you what you trying to where you trying I, to go with this? I kind of and the reason why I brought up these names, man, and thinking about it, all of these guys that we had on the Hall of Fame is the greats. You know, we're, we're we're blessed to make it to the league, but each one of those players that came on, they all said the one thing that eluded them was a championship. You know what I'm saying? Making a making a Hall of Fame and making it to the league and your respective field. Yeah, I get it, but that one thing for me, that one thing that that avoid you from being the greatest of the great, the greats, the best of the best. Right. Is that championship, man. And I go back to when we didn't make the league, high school, Pop Warner, college even. You know, some of us ain't get paid going to college like some people did. I ain't gonna bring up no names that, you know, down at the plains of- I know, uh, we, don't do, we don't do that in the SEC yeah. West. No lies in the lounge. <laughs> no lies, lies in, in the lounge, lounge baby. But I think, I think of growing up and what the sport was initially about. It was about winning. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, the stats are good, but for a team goal, what did you want to do? You want to win the game. You want to win championships. So for me, I think what else is there after you've made it to the league, to the top, that 1%, what else is there but to win the championship? That void haunts us all, man. And I think that's, it does matter. I think it does matter. Uh, yeah, I, I, it matters, but it doesn't define it. And it doesn't even, even if you put it on a scale, you can't say this is 50% or this is 50%. Like when you're talking about when you're trying to become defined as a player, I can think about several people since this is basketball season, John Stockton, Patrick Ewing, mm -hmm. and Charles Barkley. Yeah. Guess what they have in common? They all play basketball. No, Tuton. <laughs> it's one more. NBA 75. NBA 75. Hall of Famers. Hall of Famers. But guess what? They didn't win a ring. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I talk about what it exactly does to you post-playing career, man, it doesn't affect the legacy. I think anything, it actually enhances it from a standpoint of we take Chuck. He was on here on our show. And you look what he's been able to do since his postpartum from the NBA. This man is now winning Emmys mm -hmm. for the best sports television show 
on TV, period. And every that's the model. That's the template that they've set. People try to recreate it just because of, not just because he didn't win a ring, yeah. but because this dude enhances everything with what he does by the way he played the game, the mark that he left on the game, and, hell, he's still a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I can't deny it. Can't right. deny it. But think about every time Chuck is on NBA on TNT, right? What do Kenny Smith and Shaq get on him about? The ring count. That's what it comes down to. You talk about Shaq. Shaq now in this era is widely recognized as the most dominant big man ever playing the NBA, right? Prior to him, who was it? Wilt Chamberlain. Yep. Right? Wilt only had two rings. Shaq trumped him easily with his four rings, right? Wilt still has so many stats, as Dominique Wilkins just said, that are in the NBA record books, record books that probably never will be broken. My opinion, one of the most dominant big men, probably one of the GOATs of all time, when you just look at a statistic, no from a statistic, st I can't even talk, from a statistical... My God, should I hit you on, on the hold back? No, 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 I need, hold on, hold on. Get some more of that cold adult beverage in you. All right. From a statistical standpoint, Wilt is one of the GOATs, one of the greatest of all times. But when Shaq comes along, wins more rings, that's out the window. Still averages over, what, 50 points in a season? That's that's ridiculous. But then Shaq Wilt did. Yeah. But now Shaq comes along nowhere near that. More rings, recognizes one of the better big men of all time. You know why? It's because it depends on the age demographic that you're asking. And probably when they give you a response like that, they don't know their history. You don't, you don't even have to watch it, bro. Like, the power of social media now is only going to show what's been relevant lately. Yeah, it, it, so smart. you can't fall in love with that because it's, it's just during the current time. All right. Who's your GOAT of the NBA, Jordan or LeBron? You going to do me like that? Yeah, yeah. Repeat the question. Who's your GOAT in the NBA, greatest of all times, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? LeBron James. You can't be serious. LeBron been to the finals 10 times. Right. Mike has been six. And won all six. So, yeah, you've been there. Just like the Bills prior to us getting there, they've been there. But Jim Kelly's not recognized as a better quarterback than a Joe Montana. All right, Listen, go ahead, back go to ahead. the Joe Montana, right? Through us growing up, you talked about Dan Marino. I think about John Elway, two quarterbacks that statistically are way better in terms of passing yards than Joe Montana is. But ask anybody who's the GOAT of that era, they will say Joe Montana. Am I right? Yeah. And then Joe Montana was the GOAT of that era until who came along? Tom Brady, right? Stop me when I stop telling the truth. People you recognize the truth. People recognize Tom Brady as the GOAT. Yeah. Why? Because he got to the point where he got more rings than Montana did. That's why championships matter, bro. And I know you're going to say, okay, basketball, uh, Russell got more rings than, than Jordan, but, like, come on. That's, he, and he does. Where the lie is that with that? Ain't no lie, but, like, that that's kind of like the outlier. Like, Jordan oh, is so now you want to put no. stipulations on greatness. Bro, at the end of the day, it's no different than, all right, it's no different than us playing our game. Mm -hmm. You look at Barry Sanders. You look at, oh, my God, who else? Barry Sanders. You look at Edge. Mm -hmm. We talked about that already. So who's to say they're not great or their career hasn't been what it needs to be because they did not win a ring? Now, mind you, they do have another ring, the yeah. Hall of Fame ring. That's a fact. That's a fact. So I'm just saying it just enhances what they've already done or what they're doing. Mm. Like, ultimately, at the end of the day, I even look back at my 15-year career. And people can say, well, he doesn't have rings. I don't have a ring. I, I went once, but I don't have a ring. You went once, but you don't have a ring. But my point is, is this. From an enhancement standpoint, I give this is a perfect, perfect, perfect situation right here. I go through 15 years. My first 10 years was hard, hard labor. Hell, all of them was hard labor. 
five in Cincy, four in Buffalo, one in Philly, three in San Fran, two in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Do you realize I did not play? What year do you think I played on Monday Night Football? Well, you're in the league. Like, how many years in the league? Until you until, until you play? I play. Now, keep in mind, primetime games are for primetime teams. Right. Teams that who they know that's going to bring a draw in to watch to increase the ratings. I say. What year, you think? Well, fourth, maybe? <laughs> no sound effects needed. I'm going to give it to you. Six. Pause. What Ten. Year? That's what it was. It took me 10 years, bro, to play on Monday Night Football. That's after the Pro Bowls and everything else. After the Pro Bowls, after the All-Pro, after Player of the Month, after Player of the Week. I mean, and, But despite it all, through my travels, everything, I'm still now on the Hall of Fame nominee list. Yeah, I feel you. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't, like, I could easily, in the trap, that's the enemy, dog. Like, that's the trap of it is if you get caught up into what everybody else have because you don't have it from your perspective, you think that defines you. Yeah. And if I would have went back throughout my career and looked at it the same way, I probably would not have made 10 years just because I was always looking for gratification from a situation that would have benefited me that could easily – define me in front of everybody else because I can say, I got a ring. Mm. Hell no. Even to that point, been out of the game, Hall of Fame nominee, I've worked with NBC, uh, NFL Network, done appearances for ESPN. Like, I've done it all. Done radio on Sirius. I've even had some execs say, well, we're looking for somebody who is highly decorated, mm -hmm. meaning with hardware. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I guess my point to you is, that's where it enhances it. Mm -hmm. Enhances what you've already done. Because at the end of the day, when you talk about EJ, when you talk about uh, Chuck, even though they didn't win a championship, they all had in common the one thing was they they would rather much continue to put the work in what they've done over the years yeah. because the stats, which is their resume, can never be taken away from them. And that's how I feel. And I ain't finna let that define me. Like, like think about it. How can I let your opinion become my reality. Yeah. Let me say that again for the 1% that didn't hit me in the back. <laughs> How can you let someone else's opinion become your reality? Yeah. So like, bro, so when, like, I love talking about this topic because it can go so many different ways. Like you can't let somebody just sit up here and dictate it. When we were talking about LeBron James and Mike, the reason why I love LeBron, because everybody is looking at from a basketball player. And, and I can, listen, man, LeBron been to the finals 10 times, won four. Uh, Mike been six for six, mm -hmm. right? But th that's impact that we all have measured. Yeah. But listen, their impact reaches way far than just playing on the court. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about from apparel. I'm talking about from in the community, also with legislation, like all of that. And so when I look at one guy and I say, who was a better basketball player? Like, I, you know, people can say Mike, I can say LeBron, whatever. But at the end of the day, man, I'm looking at for impact, what you've done for the game overall to transcend it, transcend it. And I think LeBron, from that standpoint, has done a much better job where he's outweighed Mike just from, being in the community, mm -hmm. standing out, taking charge, taking lead, helping push legislation, bringing awareness to situations that people don't really see like to because they're caught up in the media. Wow. Wow. Well, I know see, we I may think, be going off topic. Nah, nah. But I, I feel what you're saying. I think when it comes to 
just to that point right there to stay on it real quick, when it comes to people kind of thinking that Michael Jordan doesn't impact the community, he just doesn't broadcast it. That's not the era he grew up in. Just like you and I, we don't broadcast every win that we have. Nah, that ain't it. But if you look across the board of what he's done off the court, yeah, yes, he's definitely had an impact. He supports his communities in Carolina. When uh, anything happens, it could be a natural disaster. It could be school legislation, whatever. He just doesn't broadcast it. Yeah, As the owner of the Hornets, formerly the Bobcats, he's... Uh, He's actually hired and put the most black execs in office of any other NBA team. So he's doing this thing. It's just not broadcasted or highlighted. Jordan and LeBron definitely do tremendous things off the court. Yeah. I just think those rings that Jordan has trumps the rings that LeBron has, which makes him the GOAT, makes him better. It's just my because opinion. Because he got more. Because he got more. Look at you. That make him better, yo. I can't believe you. You hypocrite over here. How am I hypocrite? Because I'm finna make you tell the truth right now. Proceed, man. No lies in the lounge. No lies in the lounge. Okay, here we go. So, if... How many years did you play in the game? Played 10 years. I played 15. Facts. We both are that 1%. We both can agree on that, right? Yeah. Let's say you played for a championship. Mm -hmm. Let's say, going back, if you would have won that championship, does your resume or your career is better, is it a better look than my 15-year career? Damn, <laughs> I'm just saying. That's how you feel, bro. I, I'm Listen, no lies in the lounge. You said it. <laughs> no lies in the lounge. I'm just no being honest, bro. All right. But it don't you. mean, you. My, to my point, it doesn't mean like your career was trash. Yeah. Because you are part of that 1%. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you look at the body of work, you can't forget about the body of work. Why? Because it's your body of work that you've put out mm -hmm. and people remember you by it. Even going back to my 15-year career, to play, to not play in a Monday night football game until year 10, yeah. I go everywhere now. People, it's obvious, but like they, people still holler at me. Mm -hmm. They know, and that ain't because I didn't win a shit. I ain't win a ring. Yeah. They know me because every time I hit the field, I had so much frustration pent up inside of me from them going a two and fourteen and all of that. Oh, you was gonna know me. Yeah, yeah. That's so it's about the body of work, bro. It is. I mean, it is to an extent, and and I don't know. I just think, man, the one thing that eluded me, and, and you're right. Yeah, my one ring. Would not have trumped your career, no, in no way, shape, or form. Just like hello, right, I get two you. Times. I get you. It proves my point. Who do I sound thing? like? <laughs> you from two weeks ago? Yes. Listen, it's not the same thing. I mean, th there's certain situations like you think of, like you know, a Robert Ori. He has what five rings or six rings, something like that. Robert Ori has six rings. Se six or seven rings? I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, but he has six. Six. Okay, so. Kareem got six. And they got more than Shaq, but Shaq is... I get it. I see where you're going with it. Yeah. So, like, I, come on, bro. I That's just... For real. And I... Listen, Robert Co Ory probably goes down as the most clutch shooter of all time in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I, I give him that. You can't deny it. But I'm not finna sit up here and let you tell me Robert Ory was better than Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. Right. Oh, it good as Michael Jordan. Right. Huh? Like, I just can't let you sit up here and do that, bro. So It's just like saying he's better than Magic Johnson. Nah, you, you, want, right. me to, you want me to stop? Nah, you good. Okay. I, I can't. No stopping when you're telling the truth. You got, Yo, you got it. Across, though. You, no it lies sense, in the lounge. No lies in the lounge. No lies in the lounge. So let me ask you this. So if that's the case, why across the board is that void there when people don't win that championship? Like... Not only from the outside, we're talking about obviously the fans. You know, fans want championships, right? They don't care how many Hall of Fames Tequil's got or how many games I played in. In fact, I went to a Super Bowl and lost. They don't care about that. Organizations typically don't care about that. We are remembered, the majority of the time, we're remembered for bringing our teammates, ourselves, the, the name on the back, of being labeled as a champion. So if that's the case and that void is there, how do we explain that when, when, how does that not define 
who you are as an athlete. How does it not define it? Yeah. Because that's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate sacrifice. That's what you, that's the stress time and heat. That's the deadlines to meet. That's the, the the reason we don't do certain things in the off season. It's the off season now for a lot of guys. That's why they're not partying in Cabo or, you know, we calling up, hey, let's hit this. Nah, they, they sitting there working. Why? To get ready for the season to ultimately win a championship. That's the goal. Championship or bust. Nobody wants to be going fishing. Listen, man. You and I or no lies in the lounge again. <laughs> You really are reaching today. I'm just asking, bro. As much as we want to sit up here and say, every guy's out there running in 100-degree weather, hoping that they get an opportunity to win a champ. No. <laughs> a lot of them are playing for the bag, Tuton. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So it don't mean that much. That's just for fans. And I'll tell you, I don't exclude myself. I'm a fan. And when we talk about these conversations, that's what makes it so good. Because clearly you you over here on the Michael Jordan train, but you wearing Harachis. You you got a conflict <laughs> of interest over here. You know what I'm saying? Bro. So see, I should have rocked my Jordans today. Yeah, you, you should. You calling me out, bro. So let me ask you this: you you want to you want to throw people under the bus and, and, and reverse it? When you played, when yeah. Tequil Spikes played, what did you play for? I Top three things, because it ain't just one. It's never just one. You right? And one of them is in the lounge right now. I I played for, when I played the game, it was three things, bro. Like, I, I wanted to make sure that people walked away understanding. One, I wanted to win a championship. Mm-hmm. Two, I wanted to be elected into the Hall of Fame. And I wrote all of these down on my goal sheet. But the top one is I started this tradition with Mark Duffner, coach in Cincinnati, loving to death. Me and him used to meet before the game and on Mondays. And the first thing we said to each other before we said hello, good morning, none of that. It was, you always want to give and leave a great performance because you never know who is watching for the first time. Mm. So for me, I was like, since they out here, I know they probably haven't seen Tequio, but by golly, I'm going to give them the best show I got for them today. And that's how I attacked everything. Yeah. It it makes sense. I mean, and that's commendable. Obviously, you know, your career speaks for itself. You led with the first thing when I asked, what are the things you played for? You said a championship. Now, I know you don't feel no less validated. I'm not saying that. I'm not not saying that. Now you're trying to get away from... I'm not saying that. You just forgetting that little word... Define, D-E-F-I-N-E, define. Does it define your career? So it didn't define your career? Absolutely not. Would I have wanted to get a ring? Yeah. I would have gave my left testicle to get one. I'm telling you, man, I wanted one. You need both of them, bro. Pause, but go ahead. Okay, we'll talk (laughs) about (laughs) that. Oh, but man. bro, I just like it doesn't. Yeah. And 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 I think, and this is another conversation for the guys, players who feel that pressure on them that it does. Like I get it. Listen, man, I was in the, I was in that hole. Mm. I lived it. I love living it. But you got to be careful, man, because you can't allow someone else's op- opinion of you to become your reality. Right. Now, you forget about who you are, what means most, and it's always great, not good, but great to understand the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And the bigger picture is we're still part of that 1%, the exclusive, to be able to play this game. To this day now, over 100 years of existence, it may have been, what, 20,000 players they have came through the NFL. Mm-hmm. And to say that I was a part of that out of so many people living in the in the world, man, that's huge. Yeah, it's major. That's huge. It's it's close to 10 billion people. Yeah. And to say that we're part of that 1%, come on. Yeah. I respect that. I respect that opinion, definitely. You know what I mean? And I think when in the context of other people, 
the outside noise, right? We always say whatever's in the locker room stays in the locker room. Coaches preach that to us. Don't read the newspaper. Don't believe the hype. Now, social media, don't listen to what all these other people are saying because we know what we're doing inside this locker room. In that context, absolutely. I don't think it, quote unquote, defines you. I think that there is a void that's left when you don't meet that when you don't make that mark and, and win that championship. You know what I mean? I think of all the players uh, you mentioned, you know, your Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing when I played, um, like a, just just laundry list of players that have AI, Allen Iverson. AI. Allen AI, Iverson yeah. is Tracy another. McGrady. You know what I'm saying? Some of the some of the best players in, in the NBA. Chris Paul. C B three. Yeah, yeah. Some of the greatest players that you know, have played, and, and that's but that's the one thing that eludes them. So, to me, it's still, does that, here's the simplest way I could put it. The way I feel like it somewhat defines your career, right? Because guys play so long, sometimes after that greatness is over. Why? Not to stat, to, to, to break records, to pad stats, to, you know, make more money, maybe to make more money. But the reason they play is to chase that championship, to chase the one thing that avoids them. Carl Malone. To, to, to chase the John one... Stockton. The one thing that avoids them. So if it didn't define that athlete's career in some aspect to them, if there's something that wasn't missing, I don't think they would still chase. I don't think they would go after that one thing that's so elusive. It, it To me, what else is... It's almost like, what else is there? Like when you play, you play 15 years. And I know, as you know, as a friend, I know one of the reasons why you kept playing is because, you know what, I feel like I can still play. I have something to give to the game. And when I don't feel like I have anything to give to the game, I'm going to walk away, Yeah, which is what you did. Mm -hmm. But another reason is because you wanted that damn championship. No doubt. You know what I mean? So I, I just think, yeah, okay, I, I, I'll agree. It doesn't, I don't even know why I'm saying this because now I got to listen to this. It may not define your career, but it has a high value being placed on how your career is viewed. Is that fair? I spun the words a little bit. You finally coming over to the other side, too. There we go, man. Because when you was talking earlier, this is what I was hearing. <laughs> Patrick Ewing is less than compared to Bill Perdue. <laughs> Hell no. That's what I'm hearing from you. Nah. That's nah. your point. When we all know, when we all know Purdue was just part of a great team. Role player. Yeah. He was a good, he was a good player. He did exactly what they needed to win. But I'm not finna sit up here and just say Bill Purdue is better than Patrick Ewing. That's what you were saying, and you from New York. Hey, yo, what kind you of, from New York City. What kind of research you did before this show to, to, to pull out Bill Purdue, bro? <laughs> I just thought about that all the people who was on Michael Jordan's team. That's a fact, though. I give you that. I give Bill you that. Cartwright. I like nah. Bill Cartwright, though. Your, your jump shot was like his. That's why. Silky. Trash. <laughs> that means it was trash maybe yeah. 50% of the time. I was low post, though. Low post? Yeah. Nah, I got film nah. to back that up. I don't know, bro. But nah, you know, I think Overall, it has a lot to do with why you continue to play the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's a high value placed on that because we you can agree, we all want to win. We, you know, as soon as you get into sports, the ultimate goal is winning. The highest goal is winning a championship. So, you know, I, I just believe that, that that's what we do it for. At the end of the day, championships are only one part of a career, period. They do not affect the legacy, bro. However, they do enhance them. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you for joining this show. I can't do it. I just, I just toasted his ass. No pause. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> oh, boy, no lies in the lounge. Let me have me a drink. Yeah, I'm gonna...